Let's talk about transplant now. So we started our patient on triplet therapy, Bill, and he comes to see you at the Swedish hospital. And what, what's your advice to him about transplant and why do you give that advice and what have we learned at this meeting that has influenced you? So I tell my patients that uh, transplant is just one component of their initial therapy. It's a form of consolidation. And it's useful because it, it will inevitably improve on the response they get to whatever induction therapy. It'll improve the depth of response. And this can translate into better progression-free survival and overall survival. Now, that's based on uh, a number of studies. There were early trials in which everyone went to transplant, but they were comparing novel drug combinations to some of the older combinations like VAD. But in every case, regardless of what was used for induction, after transplant, the percentage of patients that achieved remissions went up. Now we have actually randomized trials. There's four randomized trials that have been done, all, all of them, interestingly, from Europe, uh, which, yes, it which is important. very telling right there. And, it, and it's important, too, for, but yeah. we'll come back to that later. So me. two of the trials used doublets of lenalidomid dexamethasone and then compared tandem transplants to combinations of melphalan, prednisone, lenalidomid, or uh, cyclophosphamide, dexamethasone, lenalidomid. And those trials all showed better progression-free and better overall survival, two, two of those trials. There was a recent trial presented here from the European Union, which was a very large trial with uh, nearly 1,200 patients. Uh, using uh, essentially a Cyborg D type induction regimen and then comparing uh, one or two transplants to a bortezomib melphalan prednisone regimen for four cycles. Actually, I think it might have been six cycles, but um, that trial showed again better response, better progression free survival, not better overall survival, but relatively short follow up. The problem is that all three of those trials do not are not really commonly what we do in the U.S. Yeah. So the fourth trial, which was presented uh, by the French group at ASH last year, used a combination of VRD, or bortezomib, lenalidomid, dexamethasone, three cycles of induction, stem cell mobilization, and then a randomization to a single transplant followed by two more cycles of VRD or five cycles of VRD without a transplant. That trial had better overall response rates and a better progression-free survival favoring the transplant arm. Now again, there's no difference in overall survival. We don't know if that'll translate to a survival benefit, but the follow-up is still relatively short for that trial. Yeah. So we have four trials all showing better PFS, two of the four with sufficient follow-up, better overall survival. And I think the data speaks for itself at that point. So I just want a very brief answer. MD Anderson, you'd send a, a young patient after four cycles to transplant? Yes, absolutely. Based I mean, I think, on this data? The... I think based on that data and really two things. I mean, I think we have this data, and the question keeps coming up in the era of novel therapy, so with lenalidomide and bortezomib, now with Kyprolis or Carfilzomib, now with monoclonals. And that question keeps coming up. But... The, again, what I'm going to come up here in a minute with Ola too, but I'm, I'm leaving him for last. So, <laughs> so and this again, this debate keeps coming up. But again, what I try and stick with, and what we stick with, is again, we have multiple trials showing a PFS and OS benefit. But I think that the true principle here, in my mind, is that if you have an incurable cancer or an incurable cancer in the vast majority of patients, I need every therapeutic option. Right. So until I've cured it, and until you've shown me that we've cured a vast majority of patients, then we can start talking about cutting back. Mm -hmm. But until, as a patient, you've cured the disease, then you want every therapeutic option available, right. regardless if it's therapy A, B, or C, so transplant or X, Y, and Z. That, to me, is a therapeutic option, and you need to take advantage of every option for an incurable cancer. And if you stick with that, then I think that makes it easy for us to say that's an important option for patients. Thank you. Now, Raphael, before I get to Ola, and he tells us we're all wrong. You know, very briefly, 2016 stem cell transplant is a gold standard. It's incumbent upon combinatorial strategies and, and people who strategize behind that to show that it's as good as transplant, in my opinion. There's many reasons why a patient may or may not want to get a transplant, but in my opinion, every patient who's eligible should be steered towards stem cell transplant. 
And what if they're in complete remission before they, they you, you take them, is the four or six cycles of induction therapy and, and there's no evidence of disease, do you still think you need a transplant? It depends there? on how you define that. If you're talking about complete remission that includes NGS negativity by What's the MRD, NGS for the community, next yeah. generation sequencing, looking at, at, at tests such as the, the uh, genetic base, minimal residual disease, if you have a patient like that, I think you can start the argument, although I would still say given what we know today, I would still give the patient the benefit of the doubt because we're seeing patients in complete responses, both in maintenance trials as well as a number of other interventions that the addition of, addition of more therapy actually is beneficial. So I'm, I'm curious, but I don't think I'm convinced to withhold transplant. All right, well, point. you have a different opinion. You told me before we started filming here. so. Uh, tell us your approach to this these days. I mean, I guess what I've heard so far is uh, Mayo, MD Anderson, and Seattle, people are still transplanting pretty much everybody, but you, you've got a slightly different approach. Well, I think we are looking at the same data, and I think we make a slightly different interpretation of the data. Uh, of course, there is also a component of opinion, and uh, I think the truth of the matter is that there are a lot of questions where we don't have the, the formal answers sure. to, and I'm sure you agree on that. So. I think looking at all the European studies, they clearly show that transplant has an additive effect. We know that melphalan works very well in myeloma. There is no reason to question that. But I think the question I would like to ask is, when is the right time to give it for each and every patient? Is it at the upfront setting after delivery of very good therapy where you have also evidence from testing that you actually have no detectable disease with minimal residual disease testing. So what we have done is that we have implemented uh, an algorithm at Memorial Sloan Kettering where we give six cycles of cofilsimib, ravlimid, axamathasone, and we do a bone marrow biopsy, and in that biopsy for each and every patient, we check for MOD testing. And if your MOD 10 and to minus six- And you do that by, by uh, next generation sequencing? We have sequencing or, or and we have also both. You do both? And if you're negative uh, for MRD, we give the patient the option to collect the stem cells and go to maintenance or collect the stem cells and do a transplant. For patients who are MOD positive, we advocate to go for the transplant. Uh, and we, we say so our readout from the, yeah. the study from France is that the two arms have longer progression. Uh, comparing the two arms from the upfront versus delayed transplant, you have deeper responses and longer PFS. But if you look in the two arms, there are patients that are MOD negative in both arms, and their progression for your survival is the same. So there are more patients that reach yeah. deep response in the transplant arm, but there are also patients doing it without the transplant. So if you don't check, I think transplant should be done, but if you can do the test, you may not need it. And that's, I think, an important message. I think so too. I, well, so I always tell my patients that really, you know, they ask me, when am I going to get this therapy? When are you going to transplant? What, are you going to give me maintenance? I, I always tell them the goal of therapy is to get you in a complete remission. And, and all of those parts are tools that will get us there, but maybe it's, it's the complete remission that matters, not the therapy that you have. That, I think together. the yeah. response is what matters, not how you get there. Yeah, and right. we know myeloma is so heterogeneous. We know that probably 50, 60% of patients have a much more indolent disease. So since you mentioned heterogeneous,